So now let's talk about the construction of rays of a converging lens. This one is very important um, and you'll be asked quite commonly in your examinations. So there are three rules for drawing ray diagrams. You follow the steps one, two, and three, okay? So rule number one, which is what I call the basic rule, is an incident ray passes through the optical center C without bending, which means any ray, any light ray that goes through the optical center will not bend. It will not be affected by the lens effect. So you can see here, any ray that passes through the center, no matter at what angle, okay, it will not bend. Even going straight, horizontally, diagonally, or even like this, or even from the back. If it comes from the opposite side, it also, if it goes through the optical center, it will not bend. Now, the second rule is that any incident ray that is parallel to the principal axis will be refracted by the lens and it will pass through F, the focal point, no matter at what point of the lens it goes into. So if the light ray comes from here, it will bend at this point and pass through the focal point. Similarly, at anywhere, as long as it's parallel to the principal axis, if it hits the lens here, it will bend and go through the focal point. You can see here there is less of a bend and here there is more of a bend. This also works in the opposite direction. If it comes parallel to the lens, it will bend and go through the focal point and then continue on. Now, now you notice that there are two focal points, one on the, one on the left and one on the right. So these two focal points are the same length on each side. For example, if this focal length was 10 cm, this focal length would also be 10 cm. So the third rule is that any incident ray that passes through F and hits the lens would then become parallel to the principal axis. So if you shine a ray like this through the focal point, and it hits the lens, it will then go parallel to the principal axis. As shown. And of course, the opposite way also works as well. So, now how do we draw ray diagrams? Usually, they'll give you an object, something like this, or an arrow pointing upwards. So this will be called the object. The first thing to do will be to draw using the first rule, which is any line that passes through the center would go straight. So let's draw that line first. Draw a line from the point of the object through the center and continue on. We are not done yet. Now let's try the second rule. The second rule says that any light ray that comes from the object and goes parallel for, to the principal axis and hits the lens would then bend and go through the focal point. So now you see another light ray from the object going to, and hits the lens and then it bends and goes through the focal point like this. Now let's try the third rule, okay? Any light that comes from the object and goes through the focal point here and hits the lens would actually bend and go parallel. So let's try that. Now this light ray goes like this. When it hits the lens over here, it will bend and actually go parallel. Can you see that there's a place where all these three lines actually converge? Interesting, right? Because this is the exact position of the image that was produced from the object through the lens and it forms the image. And this will be the position of the sharp image. And that's how you draw the image position from knowing where the object is. Now some of you may be asking, is it possible to do away with one line? Can we just use two? Like for example, the first rule and the second rule only. Would it get me the same results? The answer is yes. If you just, if you just drew two, you will get the same position of the image. The third rule is mainly for checking because the third line is supposed to go straight through this point as well. Now if the object is here, we do the same thing. Okay, another object, let's say it's lower. Then you draw it like this. First you draw the basic line through, then you draw the line parallel, and then you draw the line that goes through the focal point. And the point at where the lines cross again is your image. So if the object is an arrow as shown, you will use the tip of the arrow to draw the two lines 
and the place at which they cross, you should draw an arrow as well. But the tip of the arrow should be at the, at the point where they cross, and you should draw the arrow back down to the baseline. And this whole thing will be called the image. So this is interesting because you can see that the, the object actually produces an image that is flipped.